We're going to talk about Dawson Knox and why he's been terrible. Again? You always leave me. I'm going to be as visible as Dawson Knox in this episode. <laughs> So we've had a lot of people because we we did a rapid fire episode uh, this week. I don't know. We're in your driveway. You really need your belt. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the rapid fire. It there was like four or five questions that we're talking about Dawson Knox, and, right. and we we understand 110 percent the concern you're talking about a guy in Brian Dable who coached tight ends at New England, mm -hmm. saw Gronk. He should have seen how it's supposed to get run in right. an EP system with a tight end yep. that is versatile. From a physicality standpoint, uh, you know, Dawson Knox looks the part. Mm -hmm. He looks the part of Absolutely. an NFL tight end that could, that could do a bunch of different things for you. However, drops being a concern. Uh, you mentioned in the Cardinals game, you're not running the ball well, so him went to H-back, and he played a lot. Yeah. Exactly. You, so you expect when you're running an H back to be effective at some point in the rushing game, and Singletary and and Moss just weren't. Like Allen was again your leading rusher. They're not running the ball because they don't have a fullback. <laughs> <laughs> the ghost of Pat Demarco. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's the problem with the wrong game, everybody. We don't have Patrick DeMarco. That's the problem with special teams. How, how, how could it take me 10 weeks to realize that? <laughs> Speaking of ghosts, I mean, Knox, come I mean. I mean, we've talked about this on previous episodes where Dable doesn't exactly have the best reputation for involving his tight ends. No. At the tight end position in the passing game. No. But Knox is sort of a different animal because he's more of an athlete and less of a tight end, right? Like he's not. You look at a the, common theme with a lot of players in this team. Right. Yeah. Another episode. Another right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Touche. But if there was ever a time for Knox to be involved, it's when Tyler Croft takes out like the entire tight end room, right? <laughs> like. Let me ask you this. Yeah. You're quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. Okay. Or no, oh, I'm sorry. You're the offensive coordinator. Okay. I'll make it this way. You look out. You're standing behind. I can't. I can't with you. You know the diet call. You're sitting there and you're standing behind your offense at practice and you have Josh Allen. Standing next to him is Singletary. You have a three wide set of Brown, Beasley, mm -hmm. and Diggs. Mm -hmm. And um, Knox is your tight end. Mm hmm. What option is he on that offense? I I will tell you this. Okay. Knox is the greatest I forgot about them weapon on this team. Knox should be in for two big targets a game because people are just going to forget about him up the same, right? Especially if you have running backs involved in your passing game, those linebackers are going to have to leak out to cover those running backs. And then you got all that area for Knox to be effective. And we saw Knox be effective last year. A lot of times it was when plays were breaking down, right? Mm -hmm. This year, Allen is finding time in the pocket, and it seems like the more comfortable he gets in the pocket, the less likely he is to target Dawson Knox. And that tells me two things. One, Knox has zero idea how to read zone coverage and soft spots, which makes sense because they played primarily man coverage in college. He didn't get that many targets as it was in college, so I kind of understand that. But opposite side of that coin is there's plenty of opportunity for him with these weapons. You can't just say, well, you know, Allen's going through Diggs, and then if Diggs isn't covered, then he's going to Brown, and if Brown is, is still covered, then he's going to yeah, Beasley, and then the he's going to Knox. Exactly. And that's not the way that it breaks down. Like, at some point, Dawson Knox is your best offensive weapon on a play, but you have to be able to recognize that before the snap. I don't think that's on Knox. I think that's on Allen. You feel more comfortable throwing the ball than Knox or Beasley? Oh, Beasley. I mean, that's not even a question. Yeah, Knox that's not or uh, Diggs. No, it's not. It's. I know where you're going with this. Knox and, or Moss. Yeah. Mm, 
Remember, Moss. it's comfort level. Moss. Maybe Moss. he's not comfortable throwing at them because of Maybe. some of the drops. Maybe. And he should be one of those guys. Right now, he's used as a decoy. Yeah. And he's not effective enough to be used as a decoy. Yet, right. Yep. Which I don't understand. Yep. In the Arizona game, Dawson Knox played 70% of the offensive snaps. Yeah. 70. Do you have a catch? The only people who played more uh, for him that were like – Diggs played 95%. Beasley yes. played 79%. Okay. John Brown played 74%. Knox played 70%. Right? Okay. Wow. So, yeah. But. You're telling me your running backs had more targets than Dawson Knox? Dawson Knox had four targets, two receptions in that game. Oh. Do you remember any of them? No. 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 Mm-hmm. What was it like 25 yards or something? 16. Oh. A long of 10. Any first downs? Maybe one of them. Uh, the ten yards. Maybe. Well, no, it's a big maybe. deal. If he's making yeah, two maybe. catches and they're both first downs, yeah, big deal. Right. But I digress. Yeah, the fact still remains that Knox is, and I understand it's easy to forget about when you have players like Diggs, Brown, Beasley. But right? then the other team, like you said, forgets about him too. So he's he should the, be open. He's the easiest person in the world to just drag up the same. Right, that seam is wide open. But he the, should have one-on-one coverage is every time. Him? Every time. He's not beating you, is what you're saying. Yeah. Or he's not He's not in the top three options of the round. Because Allen is making his progressions pretty well. Well, it makes me wonder how, how they stack Allen's reads, right? Because if Knox is on the backside of every play, it's, you know, it's, well, that, Allen's that's, not getting there, I would right? say last year you're right, because they did have a lot of things to have front side reads for Allen. Right. So they did have a lot of levels concepts, a lot of uh, same side concepts. Right. Uh, they would roll him out mm-hmm. a few times. Yep. I understand that. But if Knox is on the backside, I understand. Maybe he's not getting there. But I'd say Allen is getting to the backside sometimes now. Knox had the most targets he saw all season in that Arizona game. Every game prior, he's had three targets. And he's walked away with no more than two catches in every game. I mean, it's just... Do you think that the offensive play calling and the offensive philosophy is such that even if he caught those passes, he wouldn't get more opportunity? That's an interesting question. Because I'm thinking, Here's, even if he catches those, it's still the Diggs, Beasley, and Brown show. Absolutely. No, it, I have And a even feeling, when Brown out, he wasn't getting more targets. Isn't that so weird? I, I feel like, and, and you tell me if I'm wrong on this, but I feel like because of the quarterback that Allen is and how he has a tendency to be very late on reads, the linebacker safety versus Knox are closer in a matchup than Diggs on a corner, than Brown on a corner. Like the talent discrepancy between them yes. is so much closer on Knox. By the time Allen makes the read and looks to Knox, that window's smaller than it is to every other receiver, right? Yes. So I don't know if this is necessarily Dawson Knox problem as it is a Josh Allen issue. Not if he's running up the seam, though. But I think, I, I, think scheme, can, I think the scheme has a lot. I to think do he can him. beat anybody up the seam. That's the thing. I I'm think saying. he can beat almost any linebacker up the seam too. Like I think the talent's there, right? He hasn't proven he can catch the ball. But if we're just going to excuse that as an excuse and just write that off as an excuse of, well, he's an NFL player, his level of expectation is to catch the ball. Mm-hmm. He's only seen three targets a game anyway, right? And up until this game, he really was only playing like thirty or forty percent of snaps. So we're talking just not used, like no, just not used. Now, the question is, do you cut him? If you cut Dawson Knox, does he clear waivers to put him on your practice squad? Does he clear waivers? Yes. And do you just protect him? No. no actually, no, because New England will pick him up. <laughs> tight end's a bad position. There's a lot of teams that need tight ends. There's a lot of teams. Yes, absolutely. A lot, a lot of teams that um, need tight ends. But I think this goes back to the brass. This will go back to the brass. If you cut any player that you've drafted – it's it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. So it's a failure. See it it is a failure, especially third round. Third rounds are supposed to be guys that you have at least for two contracts. Mm-hmm. If you don't, whoa, okay. Well, they missed on that third round pick. They missed on that third round pick of Dawson Knox. Was he third rounder? Uh, no, he was fourth. fourth he was rounder. taken after Singletary. Okay, taken after Singletary. So he's a fourth rounder. But the, but the fact still remains that. You can't. I like, think he was a third rounder. So weird. All right, go ahead. Oh, maybe they traded up into the third form. 
I don't, I don't remember. Uh, in either case, when you look at the way that the Bills have been able to acquire picks, right? They're not acquiring third and fourth round picks. They're acquiring fifth, sixth, seventh round picks. They're they're not at replacement level, right? No. But they've also done nothing to address that tight end room. It's a lot like when Bean first came in. The wide receiver room, the for Bean's first year was the wide receiver room at the start of the second year, right? The tight end room. We've done exactly the same thing. It's Croft, it's Smith, it's Tommy Sweeney. It's the same tight end room. You added Reggie Gillian. That, that's Sweeney the fresh in the blood. same draft as Knox, too, which I don't. That's weird. But you didn't address the position, so they clearly felt comfortable with it. Did they feel comfortable with it because they didn't have a healthy Croft and they were thinking that Croft was the solution? Or did they really think well, they Knox signed was going to take it? Well, yeah. they, they, they signed him. They, they draft Knox to be the heir apparent mm -hmm. to Croft. Yes, I agree with apparently that. Apparently, Croft is the type of tight end they want in this offense or that Dable wanted in this offense. Mm -hmm. I want a guy that can block and mm -hmm. catch three passes a game. That's what my offense is, is designed to do. I don't think Knox can block the way that Croft can. He can't. Not yet. No, not yet. Nope. He, you, you give him another offseason, though. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's why Croft isn't very involved. Again, you take a look at the matchups of who Croft is going against. That that the window for Allen to make that read late like he does, oh, it's just not there. It's not there. Croft like, takes out the entire time. What? <laughs> That's what you said. What? You said Croft takes out the entire tight end room. He did. Not. He just walked in, painting Corona all <laughs> over the wall. Or was it the other way around? Was it the other way around? I can't remember. Maybe I Croft know. was the only healthy tight end. He was the only healthy one. Oh, that's because he had a baby. Yes. That's right. His daughter saved him. That's right. From the Rona. Yeah, that's right. Either way, right, Knox had perfect opportunity to, to put a stamp on his position, show his run blocking ability, show his ability in the pass game, played 70% of snaps. Total I ghost. Think, I think it's a poor, total ghost. I think it's a poor business decision if they cut Knox. Plus, with the state of your team. I don't think guys are getting cut like they would have in the past because of the situation yeah, going on in, I agree. In, in the country. I agree. Well, plus your roster can fluctuate so aggressively because somebody could just yeah. get sick and take out four players along the way. <laughs> you literally can't afford to bring in new players because by the time those players get up to speed, you know, you could have three or four players that go out and you just sign this guy and you need him to play tomorrow because somebody tested positive. You just signed him, you know, a few days ago. Yeah. It, it's a tough position to, to, to put a team in, right? I think you kind of have to hold on to the players that you have in house because the risk of replacing them and getting somebody up to speed and having that room stay healthy the whole time is just not there. Like it's too big a variable. Mm -hmm. yeah, but is Dawson Knox a disappointment this year? I'm going to hedge on disappointment as far as like bust conversation but i i was anticipating more growth from him than i've seen i don't think he's disappointing no when you insert a stefan Diggs in this offense i'm not expecting a lot of production on my tight end uh, and i think that's a first especially at the guy calling the calling the, the trigger man yeah calling the plays he, he hasn't used tight ends in the past so yeah. i was i never had high expectations for the tight end anyway well also you're you're 50 catches Give me 50 catches. Well, this is entire college career, but okay. I know, but no, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what I expect out of a tight end in a table offense. 50 catches. That's less that's than, kind that's of like best three case a game. That's best case scenario. Three and, well, and how many targets is Knox? Three? three. There you go. Catch him like you got.